Hello mates, CMB Minecraft here. Uh, today we're going to be having a little ganders at the old RS Nor latches uh, memory cells. Um, I'm going to go through how to build them. We're going to have a look at this, the one wide, uh, which is my favourite at the moment. Um, and then we're going to have a look at this compact uh, model here. Um, and then after that, once we've gone through that, I'm going to show you how to use them. Uh, and what they're used for. Um, there's quite a lot of applications. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Hokkai. Um, let's start with the compact latch. So, we start with a block with a torch on the side. And then a block there with a torch on the side. So, one block spacing. Um, now, then you feed redstone off the torches into the other block. So this one's going to that torch, that one's going to that torch. And that's basically how a latch works. It's a torch powering another torch in a loop. Um, and then your input's there and your reset's there. So that's the difference really between, say, a T flip flop and a latch. So with a latch, you have to input there. It turns it on, switches it over, and then you have to reset it here. Uh, so it's slightly different. Now, your output is anywhere off of this uh, redstone, or you could actually come straight off the torch like that. Because when you press this button, it swaps over there. So as long as you're getting power from somewhere, it's all good. So this is your output into whatever. Uh, I'll be explaining that in a little bit. Door, for example, for now. Um, open, close. So if you were to use it in a real world situation, this would be your open door button. And then if you walk through the door, you just got a leader reset line to the other side. And you can close the door like that. Now, I wouldn't really suggest doing this. I'm just giving you an example because you won't be able to open the door from the inside. Um, so yeah, that's just, that's just an example of how it can work. Now, let's do the one wide. Um, I use this a lot more, so I think it's more useful. Um, start with a block with a torch on it, into a repeater, block, redstone on top of that block, and then a block above the repeater, and then a torch there. So these torches um, are in a loop together once you put the redstone there. So this is going through here, powers this block, powers that redstone, which then uh, turns this torch off but then when you switch it over by inputting here it turns this torch off which lets this turn on and it powers this redstone here which keeps this torch off permanently until you reset it like that so it's exactly the same as our other latch does exactly the same thing now your output for this uh, is either this redstone or this torch basically um, so again I use a door just to give you an example uh, oh, a bit like that. Um, so your input's here, and your reset's there. Now, some of you might notice this is the wrong way round uh, in this application. So your in, uh, input is actually closing the door, uh, which we don't want. So you've got to invert the entire circuit. And if you ever need to do that, all you have to do is put a torch there. And this block essentially becomes a knock gate as well as... Um, part of the circuit so uh, now the outputs inverted so instead of it being the door is open and then you input and it closes it's now the opposite so you input and it opens and then it closes like that um, so yeah that is the two basic latches really uh, now I'm just going to show you over here um, ways of using them in far more interesting operations than a wooden door so uh, yeah right let's just have a look at some examples uh, this is my minecart station uh, I've done a tutorial on this uh, if anyone's interested I'll put the links in the description all that jazz um, now anybody that's seen that tutorial will know that this minecart station uses uh, latches and you can see that here that these little blue fellas uh, exactly the same as the one wide design we just built over there just got some extra bits added um, now what happens is you press this button 
and it powers the latch. So this is the back of that button there, and it powers this redstone, uh, which swaps the latch over, uh, like we were doing back over there. So you can see that these aren't swapped over because I haven't pressed a button on them. This one is. And now the output uh, is on because we've pressed the button, including we've got our little knock gate inverter, which I talked about a minute ago as well. So it's now on here, which has swapped the track over, which means when the cart comes down here, skips this, skips this, and then it gets sent off this way. Um, so that's that's a way of just memorizing your selection. Um, and then obviously, if I do it with a different line, it powers a different latch, which again has lit this up, and you're just going to go straight off line one now. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of how you stack them next to each other and a use for that. Um, let me just, oh no, I don't need to do that yet. Um, now, as far as resetting these latches go, it's slightly different to the other one. You need to power this redstone or this block, uh, basically. Um, and there are a few ways to do that. But here, the way I've done it is through these repeaters. Um, for those of you that didn't know, uh, if you power a block and there's redstone below it, it will receive power from that block. And that's what we've got to do to reset this. So if we see here, this is our selected latch that's on. And this redstone's off, but we've got to get power to that somehow to reset the latch. And the way we do that is we've got a detector rail here, goes into this block, into the note block, and then it goes across the reset line. Um, and as it hits hits this one, power goes into this block. This is going to pick it up and reset our selection. So like that. Uh, so you can see it's turned off now, and these are on. Um, so that's how to reset. I mean, you can. There are a few other ways of doing it, but that's the kind of main one. Um, so yeah, I've I've got the world saved for this, obviously. So you guys can come on and check it out if that's uh, more helpful for you. Now, there's three other examples on this world save that you guys can take a look at. Um, there's this four-bit memory array here, um, which is a more kind of computing thing, uh, which is quite. A, I mean, it's more advanced. It is more advanced. So. Um, I'll quickly show you uh, how it works. So these are your inputs here, uh, and you select three, so they're up here, those three are up. Now, if you want to, this is a read-write um, RAM array, so basically you can read from it and you can write information into it and store that information. The way you do that is, you've got these in, like that, and then you write that information here, and that's going to store it and output it here. So if we now mess about with these it won't affect the pistons out here um, so yeah like I say this is a little bit more advanced um, it's used a lot in computing this is kind of how RAM array arrays work um, so that's that and then you can obviously write nothing onto it or whatever you want um, now so that's that I'm not I'm not too bothered about that right now uh, we'll probably get into that at a later date um, more importantly is probably this one, which is Minecraft Addict's um, conditional RS null latch array. And uh, this is excellent. Everybody's using these at the moment. Um, and I'll show you why. Now, the way they work is every time you input the circuit, um, it's going to activate a latch, but it does it in order. So I'll give you an example of that. So you press it once, and the first latch activates second latch activates, third, fourth. So it works in a sequence. Um, now, this is really, really useful for things like um, combination locks, uh, seven segment displays where you want to display a number every time you press a button or have an input. So say this signifies one, this output will then go into a decoder into a seven segment display to show you one then two and so forth. Um, won't get into decoders right now. I am going to do tutorial on all this stuff uh, much more in depth at some point. Um, but I'm just flagging this up for you guys so you know that it's out there um, and you can come check it out on the world safe. So that's that. Now we're going to move on to this little fella. Okay. Uh, I think this is the future. Uh, it's pretty awesome to be honest with you. Um, it's quite new. Uh, quite a lot of people are using it, though. I've seen it uh, floating about loads. So, um, yeah, let me just do a little bit of explaining. Uh, 
It could be considered, I would call it a ring buffer. Uh, that's disputable, but that's not important. Um, and so the, basically the way it works is like this. You press a button and it shifts all these blocks around one. And then as you can see, the output changes up here. So these pistons are our output. So every time you press a button, they're going to change uh, their values. Now, the reason this is so good and so useful is you can store enormous amounts of information um, in this thing and it really doesn't take up that much space compared to something like this. This is storing four bits of information. This is storing 10 or you could even, I mean, you could even say 40 bits of information, but we'll say 10 for now. So it stores a hell of a lot more uh, in a much smaller space and it also decodes the information at the same time. Um, so it works a bit like that and the reason these pistons change is because let me do a little bit of flying they're getting power from in here this is always on here and it powers these blocks that get shifted up so every time these blocks get shifted up into this area they're getting power from behind and then it gets picked up by these repeaters here and then it gets outputted onto these pistons and the way you change the information is you replace uh, the block with glass because glass doesn't carry a redstone signal um, it won't output and as you can see this one's off because it's got glass behind it but the ones with normal wool blocks behind are picking up the power so you can see it's just swapped over there um, and the reason this is so useful is because say you were to hook this up to a, a seven segment number display um, it will decode the information and store the information at the same time whereas this latch array just gives you one bit of information every time you press the button and then it has to go into decoder then it has to go into a seven segment display so this um, is a lot better really um, it's it's harder to build it's more complex but it does a better job in my opinion so um, that's that I'll be doing some um, tutorials and all that business on seven segment displays this um, and the conditional latch array uh, shortly so uh, that's it for today cheers for watching